Okay, so this is what I would have used as my get home bag. I wouldn't, I didn't bother put, having my big military bag because, like I said, to a degree space was an issue. So I thought I'd go for the smaller pack. Uh, yeah, nice pack that um, Pete got me on my uh, unboxing video. I think that would be a good size to go with. So, um, like I said, it's been ages since I've packed this now, so I've got a rough idea what I've put in. So I'll just sort of start from the top and work my way down. So we have in the main top pouch. A Milbank bag or a Milbank type bag. So that'll be for purifying water. My um, monocular, so I could scout what, what was up ahead if keep an eye on the situation. My Sawyer filter with its um, one litre bag. So, you know, if, if, water, if water was scarce, I've obviously got uh, my uh, bottle, which is a litre and a half. I would fil I'd filter that and fill that straight up and then fill the bag up with water as well because it's got a little lid so you don't have to instantly filter your water. You can just store it and think, right, well, I'll save that for later. So once I've drunk that, I'll transfer it into there. First aid kit, very minimal one, but better than nothing at all. Um, one of those uh, little squirty squash things, because you know you need to have some fl some perks. You know, with wa water's nice enough, but sometimes you just need to have a drink. Oh yeah, and I've got um, a two liter Sawyer filter bag as well, so that bumps it up to four and a half litres of water, of carrying capacity now. And that's between two people as well, because like I said, I'd fill this all up, probably give this to Bob, and then as we needed it, just transfer it. Right, so that's the top pouch empty. So we'll pop it open and then go for the underneath part. style gloves for um with my regards to using my stone stove and um, processing the wood my um can't remember what it's called now Anglo Arms knife my first one still still got that The Mora as well that Pete gifted me because I figured one for Bob, one for me. My Gerber torch. Another, another knife, fork, and spoon set because I um yeah I put the, my um the ones in my day sack a little while ago because I left that in there. But I think there's enough there for both of us. Then. My folding saw, processing wood, and then, oh yeah, another torch, so one for me, one for Bob. My little pocket knife sharpener that I was gifted. And then this is an addition. I didn't have this at the time, but it's um I got this at the preppers meet. Roach was kind enough to give this give this to me and absolutely honored when he when it chuffed to bits when he gave me this. So I've got another one in my stove or the, uh, my original one. So I would have given that to Bob, you know, one for me, one for him. You know, even in the worst case scenario if we got split up, at least then he, I know he'd have some kit to get home with. Okay, so that's the top part completely empty now, so let's go to the main pouch. Must admit, I have, I have sort of dived in and out of this for bits, but I've put, just put it back in, but I've got um, paracord. 
my fire lighting bag, bungee cords, the remnants of my uh, coffee mix. <laughs> I think when we were in London I made us a, a brew anyway before we headed home so we had a coffee for the trip. And then I put the uh, waterproof DPM rain smock that I was gifted in there as well. I figured one of us would wear that one. Yeah. So probably I probably would have given that to Bob to wear as an emergency and I'd have used my poncho. Um, toilet roll. My stove kit, which I'm pretty sure has got my other fire steel in. And that's got um, a couple of, pa well you've seen it, a couple of pans, uh, stuff for lighting and cleaning out with. Um, Trangia burner in there as well, so if, and I've got a spare mess in there, just in case I couldn't get any wood erected and gathered. Tarp, because like I said, I am, um, for laying on, I was under the conclusion that if it was a real emergency situation and space being the thing, I made enough so that one person could get some sleep and the other could keep watch. So, yeah, tarp for laying on. And then the uh, heat reflective roll mat for laying on, keeping warm. My uh, wind guard for my stove. Yeah, here's my um, my other fire steel. It's in the little pouch there. So my Martindale Golok for wood processing and other chopping tasks. <laughs> Can't remember what this is. Huh? Ah, it's my basher. <laughs> basher for shelter, so at least whoever's getting some sleep. Well, if, if worst case in a one person would just you just one person would be laid down to sleep, the other one would be under it. But like I said, um, there's some tarpauling in the truck, so I probably would have nabbed that, so one person could have the basher and lay down and sleeping, while the other one was just worst case scenario, just had it over the top of them, keeping themselves dry, keeping watch. Then I have a sleep system in here, which is well. Let's get it out because obviously there's um stuff packed in. Yeah, so it's obviously in a compression sack. So the rest of the kit, hang on, follow up. Oh yeah, tent pegs. Yeah, so that's the bag empty now. So pretty much it's just um, what's left in here. So let's get what's in, let's get out what's inside here. So in here I've got, alright, this is my um, spare clothes, so I've already, I haven't got any like proper waterproof bags, so I figured worst case, at best I'll put it in a bag just to give it some waterproof. So this would be a, once I'd gotten out of central London, well out of London completely, I'd get out of my work clothes and into more prepping style things. So I've got my uh, drizzle bone top. That was really good at keeping the wind off. I was pleased with that when I went out on my, old, my last all-nighter. Spare pants, <laughs> spare socks, another thermal. That's just an ordinary thermal t-shirt. Thermal trousers for keeping my legs warm. 
and then my uh, DPM trousers to go on top. And then I also, let's get to the sleep system. Then I also had my bivy bag <laughs> and my jungle sleeping bag. So, um, yeah, like I said, this I probably um, did this just before, probably about a couple of weeks before the preppers meet. So, not the warmest of um, situations. So, I, I brought the uh, jungle bag because I figured it's not going to be as warm as my sleeping bag, but combined with the bivy bag, because when I was on my camp out, that sleeping bag, it was sweat fest. I, you know, my back was drenched. I had to get out of this bivy bag and just lay on top. So I figured it might. This might not be the warmest of situations, but combined with the bivy bag, I'll probably be all right. So that's one person able to sleep. If I had to go to London again, I would probably add the. Uh, hammock chair that um, Mac Tightwad gifted me because then at least whoever's having a sleep the other one could sit in this and to a degree probably get some sleep not you know proper sleep but you could doze in it so at least they're getting some rest and then you know um, yeah so that's the, the kit so like I said I'd have had to have Worst case scenario, I would have had to have walked 230 miles home. And my phone calculated that at two days. So that's obviously just non-stop walking. And to be honest, I don't think I could do 230 miles non-stop in two days anyway. So I told the missus to wait for me for about 10 days. And to be honest, I don't know if I'd have made it back in 10 days, but I'd have given it a damn good try. <laughs> and it would have just been walk all day, as soon as it's starting to look dark, get somewhere camped, maybe at best get, and on a generous day, maybe get four hours sleep each, but realistically, probably be more, be more two or three hours, and then just swap over, one goes into the hammock chair, the other one gets in the bag. So yeah, um, let me know what you think, I mean, realistically, chances of getting 230 miles with what I've got. I I don't know my, uh, if I could have done it or not with it. And like I said, I would have acquired food and water all, along the way. Even if it was something as desperate of, as um, ramming my knife into a car radiator and pouring in, in, in getting all the water out of the radiator. Not the best situation, but you could do it. So... Yeah, just um, let me know what you think, or realistic chances from a, a shift situation. I mean, this stuff would have been overkill for a breakdown, you know, at best we'd have just put the, smart, the waterproofs on, wait for the cavalry to arrive and get the truck going again. And like I said, in a worst case scenario, I don't know if this would be enough. Probably not. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I'll... Um, I'll leave it at that, so thanks for watching, and um, take care, and see you soon.